Now, now, straight into it. We are joined in the studio now by two very special guests this morning. Straight here are... from the cast of The Lion King. <laughs> yes, we have got Nick Afoa. Hey Nick, how are you going? Good, thank you. Who plays Simba. <laughs> and we've also got a Jocelyn. Now, I, I'm going to get you to pronounce it because I pronounced it wrong before. <laughs> how do you say your surname? So, so, Candy. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, the, of course, The Lion King is in town playing at the Regent Theatre. But I wanted to, Nick, um, singing probably wasn't, I don't know, was it your first love or was rugby your first love? Um, well, they actually came hand in hand, actually. I mean, I, I did play a lot of rugby um, growing up, but um, singing actually surprisingly was a big part of it. I mean, you know, singing and music is a big Big, uh, big part of the, the rugby culture as well. So well, yeah. Okay. Well, describe that to because obviously, I mean, you do sing the national anthem at yeah. these sporting events because you were playing rugby at a really early age and um, was in the was it the under 17s or the under 19s national side in New Zealand? It was the under 19s. Under 19s. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, how did the singing and rugby go hand in hand? I mean, obviously, there were times where I needed to choose. Um, uh, to do one or the other, if, if they clashed on the weekend and stuff, and I think growing up it was okay. Um, going to school, you could, you had all this time to do all these things. You could do your music, you could do your rugby, but it was uh, when I left school and I had to make the decision um, about which one do I pursue. And uh, rugby was the one that I made the choice. Yeah. Choice to do. And um, singing was kind of the hobby, but uh, rugby was more more the dream. Um, and yeah, that was the road I I took for a while. Until I couldn't any longer. Well, yeah, you. Yeah. Now, it, from my research, I, I heard you um, had a torn, and I don't know what this is. An ACL. What's an ACL? ACL. I think I there's a. I think there's a reason. <laughs> it's, it's ACL because the, the the long word is just too long. It's too long. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> and, oh wait, anterior, anterior cruciate ligament. There you go. That's Our, a leg yeah. Injury, right? Yeah. Yeah. Left knee. Left knee. Yeah. Okay. And that sort of. Uh, yeah, you sort of couldn't play rugby. After that. Yeah, I, t I tore um, tore the ligament like grade three, like the worst tear, and I had a full knee reconstruction. Um, and I tried to rehab, um, did did everything I could, but it just sometimes it's just not the same. Um, and to get back on the rugby field, which is quite a physical game. Yeah, yeah. Um, and to reach the level that you were at before you did the injury, um, yeah, it was, it was pretty tough. So, how did you transition then from rugby to music? Because obviously, um, you said that you had a passion on mm. both, but was it quite a easy transition for you? Because you've been doing doing both, or um, was it a hard thing to get into? It was easy in terms of because I had already there was a, already had a love for the music, mm. uh, but it was hard in terms of just fully changing my life and my lifestyle around it. Because um, when you put your heart and soul into something, and then it doesn't come to fruition or, or what you expected or what you dreamed, you know, there's a period of, of I don't know, almost mourning, you know, yeah. like a, a dream lost. Um, and so, yeah, there was that period of time where I had to just re, re to myself, you know, and um, yeah, find that self-belief again. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Now we'll come back and talk about the Viking in a minute, but I want to talk to Jocelyn as well. Now Jocelyn, I believe you were a contestant on South African Idol. Yes, I was. And is that, that's where you sort of came to the notice of the public? And um, how did that go for you? Um, I, w I, I went to um, university and, and so I, I couldn't pay for my university fees. Right. And um, so I had to leave for, for two years and... and um, I had to find money so that I could go back to school and I just couldn't save enough money so um, my friends were like you should do idols so you can you can go to idols you can do big get money and you can go back to school and I was like okay cool that's the plan so I, I decided I'm gonna go on idols and I went on idols and unfortunately I just made it to the top 16. Hey top 16 that's uh, pretty so good. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So was pretty good but from there I got lots of exposure you know yeah. from there people started noticing me and uh, and from there, I could do more gigs and you know get some more money, and yeah, I went back to school. Because uh, that was yeah, the and that was it. You did go yeah, back and you did went back to school. Uh, complete your degree and yes. But then you did continue with your love of music, and you yes, ended up getting cast in Annie. I think was your first stage show, wasn't it? Annie was actually prior to to uh, oh. my university degree because I did that um, back in high school. That was my oh, first. Oh right. Yeah, step on stage in high school. 
So ha what happened after your degree? Did you actually continue with the, the academic path or how did you transition into music after? I actually um, got the role of Nala during um, my, my, my third year at university. Um, so I came to Australia and I was still completing my degree via correspondence um, because my, my dream was always to first of all get, get, my, um, get my degree. Yeah. And, and I didn't want to let the role stop me from getting that. So I spoke to my lecturers before I left and I told them my plan and my dream. And they were fortunate enough to, to help me through it. And I came to Sydney. Um, and while rehearsing, um, when everyone went home to sleep, yeah, I was submitting essays. And oh, I was wow. um, right. doing everything that I could in order for me to get my degree. And by the by mid Sydney, I had... You know, I got my degree, I graduated. Yay, congratulations. <laughs> so you. you both met in, in Sydney yes. for the production of The Lion King in mm -hmm. Sydney. The, it must have been quite amazing with the cast coming in around from around the world. And because, I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's quite an amazing production. I mean, I remember seeing The Lion King in Sydney many years ago. And it's quite a daunting task for this, this yeah. musical. It's quite huge, isn't it? Yes, it is. But I, I, I think it's it's so much more deeper than just a musical, you know, because the Lion King is all about the heart and the soul mm. and, and spirit. Um, when you meet different cultures, like I know the Samoan and the Maori culture, mm. we're so similar that it, 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 you just felt like mm. we were home away from home. And it made it so much easier for us to do our job mm. because, you know, we just love each other and we love each other's cultures and presence. Yeah. It's we're, beautiful. We're talking about it the other day, but the first day of rehearsals, we all met each other for the first time, um, and it was really so special. Um, from the other side of the sides of the world, you know, and we yeah. came together, and like Jocelyn just said, in that first meeting, um, we just found so many commonalities mm -hmm. between our cultures, between um, our spirits, um, mm -hmm. and then we came together and we put together this story, um, and the way we tell it now, and it's, it's, it's beautiful. And it's, um, it's great to be a part of yeah. yeah, now your Melbourne run has started. It's opening night was last week. How did that um, go for you? Big night? Big cast party afterwards? Oh, um, it was supposed to be a big cast party. Um, <laughs> but everyone was so tired and because yeah. we had been working to that to that point, to that pinnacle. I know myself, yeah. I spent like 20 minutes at the after party and I was like, guys, I can't. Um, so <laughs> I, I did my been on stage it was beautiful the audience was amazing you know yeah. the adrenaline was pumping as it always is on, on opening night um, yeah but mm. the party was good the party was yeah. good the party was good <laughs> it was yeah. did you have fun there? I did I did I had a lot of fun um, I think I worked that red carpet pretty well I think yes, oh, yes, good, good, yes, good, good. <laughs> usually it's you but yeah. Yeah, I, had my, I, had my... <laughs> I had hair malfunctions okay All right. I had hair malfunctions all the girls didn't want to help me with my hair and I was just sitting in my dressing room for like an hour while the party was going on and I finally got to the party and I was like I'm so she just wanted that entrance. That's real. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was like the late entrance. entrance. Yeah. That matters. That's all it is. It's just the entrance. Yeah. Now you guys are going to be in Melbourne for quite a long time. I think the tickets are on sale right up to the 23rd of August at the yes. moment. Wow. Um, so you've got quite a long run in Melbourne, which is fantastic. Are you settling into Melbourne? I mean, you've just probably got. How, how long have yeah. you been in Melbourne for now? With uh, about. Almost three weeks. Oh, three weeks? Three, yeah, three yeah. weeks. Um, I mean, now that we've finished opening, we're kind of are able to settle and, and yeah. fully enjoy the city. And, and for me, the weather kind of reminds me of Auckland. Yeah. Um, from yeah, New Zealand. And yeah. Four seasons in one day, and you dress for a warm day, and it rains, and it, it's. But I'm used to that. Jocelyn sitting there shaking his head. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, I can't. I can't. I'm, from, I'm from Durban, which is so tropical. Yeah. You know, and we have. It's, 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 it's more similar to Brisbane, and we have all humidity, the sun is out, and you're always you know, tanning and yeah. all those good things and I come to Melbourne and I'm like, one minute it's hot, next minute it's cold. Okay, how am I supposed to dress right now? <laughs> I'm wearing my, my, my jumper but 
I need to change now, so I have to carry like five different outfits <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for a day. I, I understand. Yeah, yeah. I lived in Brisbane for seven years, so I do understand the yeah. difference. Yeah. It's a um, huge, it's huge difference, difference for me, yeah. but, I'm, but, yeah. I, but, I'm, but I'm liking the city. I'm loving it. Yeah. It's a beautiful city to look at. And what about the Regent Theatre? Is that not a great theatre to work in? The region. Oh, I mean, I know what you're, I know, I know what you're talking yeah. about. Backstage is really cramped and small. But, is it? Oh, wow. But um, but from out front, it's, it's beautiful. Beautiful. It's, yeah. It's, it's really a stunning theatre. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, the guys can be seen basically from Tuesday to Sunday every week up until August 23rd. At the moment, it might extend, you don't know. But at the Regent Theatre, you can go to disney.com.au to get your tickets, or you can go to Ticketmaster. .com.au as well. I really want to thank Nick and Jocelyn for coming in this morning. Um, I hope that you have a very successful run here in Melbourne and welcome to Melbourne. Thank oh, you. Thank you so thank much you for having us. Our pleasure. Absolute pleasure. You're on the Bricky Bears here on Joy 94.0.